Hello there and welcome to the Card Grotto. Today in my Craft Favourites 2015 series I'm talking about adding colour. So this is colouring stamped images or anything that I'm adding onto my card using colour. So first of all I'm going to talk about pens. My most used colouring medium of all time is Copic markers. I absolutely love them. Without a doubt I do think they are worth the money. I do have a combination of some sketch markers and some chow markers. Um, I personally find that the sketch markers are a little bit easier for me to hold, so I do prefer them and I have kind of um, kind of leaned over towards the sketch markers, but I do still have a few chow markers left and um, they're just as good quality as the sketch markers. The only difference is that the sketch markers come in a lot more different colours, so that's obviously the benefit of those. Um, but I definitely think they're worth the money. They are artists grade colours, you can get refills for them you can change the nibs and um, they have really nice brush tips on them which I personally really like um, and I really find them easy to colour and blend with. Next up is the Zig Clean Colour Real Brush Markers or pens. I really like these. Um, I personally use them with water as watercolours but I have included them in the pen section just because I know some people use them without the water. And they blend really well if you don't use water but they blend very well if you do as well actually. And um, the benefit of these is that they do have a real brush tip which is quite nice. And um, I honestly think you don't need that many colours in this range. They're really quite bright colours especially if you use water with them. You can get away with not having very many colours because um, you can kind of change the intensity of the colour with the water. So I really like these and these are a really good price point as well. So next up I'm going to talk about watercolours. I've really enjoyed watercolouring this year in particular and I got hold of the Ganzai Tambi watercolours. These are a bit more of an opaque watercolour as, as opposed to traditional watercolours. I do really like them however and this is the 36 set and I really like the kind of turquoise and the um, pale blue in particular in this set but I do like that this 36 set comes with some metallics as well and they're quite nice um, to kind of add on top of the colour or you can use them obviously on their own as well. They're quite nice to splatter with if you like the splattered look. Um, but really glad that I did um, get hold of those in the end. Next up is some kind of traditional watercolours. These are the Windsor & Newton Cotman Half Pan watercolours. I really, really like these. Um, they're a little bit less quality than the artist grade, although to be honest, not that much difference. You just probably need a little bit more of the colour to actually get the intensity of the pigment that you want. But I really like these because they come in a nice compact case. As you can see you get loads of different colours and this was a really good price point on this set as well. Next up is the Tim Holtz Distress Inks. These are obviously an ink pad but I didn't include them in my stamping video just because I don't use them for stamping. I actually use them for adding colour so I will either use an ink blending tool here and then um, kind of swish on the colour blending it onto the cardstock or I'll use them as watercolours and kind of um, either do a little bit of smushing technique or I can just add them onto a palette and actually colour with them with a paintbrush um, as you would a watercolour. The next category is pencils and I've really got into using pencils again this year. Um, I used to use them a lot and then stopped when I got my Copic markers but I've been using them again this year. So these are the Derwent Colour Soft pencils. I really really like these pencils. They're very very soft. Um, I guess they're the UK equivalent of the Prismacolors but actually I think they're a little bit softer although I do only have one Prismacolor to kind of <laughs> compare with but I uh, really like these Derwent Colour Soft. Um, they're a little bit less in um, you know, price than some of the other um, higher grade artists um, pencils. So these are definitely artists um, grade as well, but really nice. Come in lots of different colours, and I just store them in one of these um, IKEA. Um, these are actually plant holders, but uh, I use them as pencil pots. Next up is the Faber Castell Polychromos. Um, again, another artist grade colour pencil. These really are quite expensive, I have to say, um, but I do think that they're worth the money. Um, this is a 60 set and you get loads of different, um, really beautiful shades of colour in these. Um, yeah, just really, really pretty and I've enjoyed using them so far and I'll definitely use them a lot more in 2016. 
Next up is the Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. These are actually not a watercolour pencil, but they are an ink based pencil, but you use them like you would a watercolour pencil. So um, you can obviously colour in your image um, on straight directly onto the paper and then you can use some water to blend it out. Um, just really, really nice. You can actually take the paintbrush to the tip of the um, ink tense pencil as well. So you've got quite a lot of different techniques you can use with them and they do dry permanent as well. So it's quite nice so you can add um, layers and layers of the different um, colours on top which is nice to have. Next up I just wanted to quickly talk about some painting accessories that I find quite helpful to use. First of all this is the Faber-Castell Click and Go Water Cup. I really like it because as you can see <laughs> it folds down and it fits really well in a drawer. Um, take doesn't take up much space whatsoever. I do know that people like using a clear um, kind of glass jar so you can see if the water's dirty. Personally I can see in this quite well and I do have two of them so I tend to use one for clean water and then one for kind of dirty water but I really like those. Next up is some um, watercolour brushes and I know this is kind of like a personal preference but I really like the Winsor & Newton Cotman brushes. These are a synthetic brush. Um, it is kind of known in the artist world that um, real hair is better than synthetic hair for paint brushes because it does, they do tend to hold more water. Personally I like to use synthetic brushes just because I am a vegetarian and if I can I'd prefer to go that way um, but um, you know that's kind of a, a personal preference but I do find these really work really very well they hold a lot of water and um, I have used them real hair brushes and actually in some ways I do prefer these ones anyway for the for the ease of use I suppose they come in a wide range of different sizes and they're quite a good price point on those as well next up is a DIY palette um, this I use, it's an Avery L stamp pocket that I've just cut the kind of flap off and then inside I just add a little bit of white cardstock just so I can see the colour. This is really helpful especially for using um, like ink pads if I'm smushing an ink pad onto it so I can get hold of some of the colour. Also good if you just want to use it as a general palette just to add some more kind of ink onto it. Also as you can see there I did do um, kind of like the technique of smooshing and um, so ink smooshing is really good with the stress inks on that um, and just find it really helpful and it's really really cheap as well so that's always a good bonus. Next up I wanted to talk about some boards and um, I do find it quite helpful to tape down my paper onto a board when I'm watercolouring it helps prevent any of the warping. This is a hard board I got mine from Simon's Stamp but you can probably get them from lots of other places. This was quite cheap actually from Simon's Stamp which is quite helpful. You can just stick it down it's just a very thin um, piece of hardboard or MDF. Next up is the Epicurean board. Now this is in comparison really quite expensive actually. It's made to be a chopping board for cookery um, and it withstands the heat so if you're really into cooking this is a really great um, chopping board actually but I use it for for watercoloring. Um, the only thing with it is because it's so expensive I actually don't want to get it um, dirty so I tend to um, use the the hardboard one if I'm going to do make a lot of mess um, and I use the Epicurean one if I don't. I know it sounds a bit silly but that's the way for some reason I seem to work. And for actual tape to tape it down with I really like the frog tape and this is the delicate surfaces one which is the yellow one as you can see. I really like it, it doesn't tend to rip the paper which is always a bonus and um, I tend to also just kind of add it onto my jumper or something just to take off any um, extra kind of stick to it even though it is for delicate surfaces so I do like using that. I do have a mini giveaway to share with you today. Today the prize is two Winsor & Newton Cotman brushes. These are in size 4 and size 2. Um, I really like these um, smaller sizes for colouring, especially like floral images and um, any stamped images. I just quite like the smaller size. So to enter the giveaway you just need to go over to my blog and I will have a link in the description bar and also on the screen here to get to my blog. It is open internationally and it will close on the 5th of January 2016. That was a look at my craft favourites of 2015 um, for adding colour. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Links to the products will be in the description bar on YouTube and also on my blog and I hope to see you tomorrow for my next instalment.